Now, a naive student might get confused here and think that it's the oxygen here that's now the electrophile. So this is the one with the positive charge. Mm -hmm. But actually, the positive charge is spread over the whole molecule. We know that in the carbonyl, it's the carbonyl carbon that's the electrophile. So even though the positive charge is here, this positive charge is really spread over the whole molecule and it's making this carbonyl carbon into a better electrophile. In all of these reactions we're looking at today, it's the carbonyl carbon that's the electrophile. Now it's a better electrophile because it's next to this positive charge. That was the purpose of that protonation step. That's right. A carbonyl carbon is a decent electrophile, and a carbonyl carbon, when the oxygen has been protonated, is an excellent electrophile. A carbonyl carbon is already a pretty good electrophile because it has a delta positive charge. But then if you put a full positive charge on the oxygen that gets spread over the whole molecule, then now this is an excellent electrophile. So it can be attacked even by a relatively weak nucleophile like alcohol. Okay. To clarify again, we saw that who protonated the oxygen? Well, the sulfuric acid, not the alcohol, because sulfuric acid is an acid and alcohol isn't. That's why this is called sulfuric acid, but this is not called alcoholic acid. Alcohols are not acids, but this is called an acid because it's good at protonating things. Good. So now that this is a good electrophile, we should have our nucleophile come in and, to, and attack. And simultaneously, that should be breaking this pi bond. We know that when the first nucleophile comes in, it breaks that pi bond. So now let's carefully see if we can draw the next intermediate that we'll get from that step. pushing arrows in, we should be able to draw the intermediate because the electron pushing arrows tell us which bonds to form and which bonds to break. So let's take our time and do what the arrows tell us to do. Oh, you figured it out. That's good. I think I started with an aldehyde, so this should be a hydrogen here. I'm going to keep putting an asterisk on the formal, former carbonyl carbon. Now, this arrow tells us that we're breaking this pi bond. And this arrow tells us we're forming a bond between the oxygen nucleophile and the carbonyl carbon. And it's good that you followed the advice that I gave earlier at putting the nucleophile up here. This is a good position to put the nucleophile in to see how we've been changing our structure. And I think you got the charges right as well. This is at the final head, so it becomes less positive. And this oxygen started neutral, but it's at the initial tail. So it's good that you remember to put in this positive charge. Some people might forget that. So that gives us our next intermediate. This is a complicated mechanism, so we keep on following along with where we are at the bottom of page one of the handout. We protonated the carbonyl oxygen from the acid, and now we've had the nucleophile attack the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. By the way, in this problem, what was the nucleophilic atom? The oxygen. The alcohol oxygen. That's right, the alcohol oxygen. And now we're ready for the next step. Now the nucleophile is going to deprotonate. Mm -hmm. Who, who's the nucleophilic atom that needs to deprotonate? The alcohol oxygen. Yeah, of course. What I should say is this is the one that was formerly the nucleophile. The thing that used to be the nucleophile now needs to deprotonate. We can see that just from our picture, right? This needs to deprotonate because it needs to get rid of this positive charge over here. Well, good. Now, how can we deprotonate that? Well, one thing we could do is we could have the sulfate take this proton. Mm -hmm. 
Remember we said that sulfates are not nucleophiles. Sulfates are not nucleophiles, but they are bases. They can take a proton. So that could take this proton here. Let's look ahead a little bit. What's going to be the next step? Or actually, in this case, maybe we actually should do that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that here. So let's show that step. Let's actually show this nucleophile deprotonating, and let's draw what the product would look like after that step. good that you're continuing to put an asterisk on the carbonyl carbon. Let's keep putting an asterisk on the carbonyl oxygen as well. Now the sulfuric acid has got its proton back. So now we have this picture here. So the nucleophile has deprotonated. Now we're ready to move on. So notice where are we in our overall approach? Well, the nucleophile has attacked, and this pi bond has broken. So we're basically at this point. Mm -hmm. The first nucleophile has come in, and the pi bond is gone. And now there's two more main things that have to happen. This, because we're in category two, we know that a second nucleophile has to attack. Mm -hmm. and in order to make room for that, the carbonyl oxygen has to leave. And we just need, are going to have to memorize that these happen sequentially. First, this oxygen is going to leave, and then the second nucleophile is going to come in. Mm -hmm. Now let's see how that's going to work. First, we have to get this oxygen to leave. Now, do you remember from last semester, here we have a neutral oxygen. Is this a good leaving group? No. no. So we're going to have to make it into a better leaving group by protonating it. You can see that's the next step here in parentheses. Now the carbonyl oxygen is going to protonate. I put carbonyl in, in quotation marks because it doesn't look like a carbonyl anymore, but it used to be the carbonyl oxygen. So now that's going to protonate. So we need to add a proton to this oxygen. Where could this oxygen get a proton from? That's right. The whole purpose of the sulfuric acid is to keep giving people who need them protons and taking away protons from people who don't need them. And we're just going to keep using that over and over. So now we're going to put this proton on this OH over here. So let's draw what the product would look like from that.
and so they put in this asterisk skin to show that this used to be the carbonyl oxygen. So that's left. So we can see the purpose of this protonation. This was not a good leaving group, but once it's got a positive charge, it is a good leaving group. So just like the first protonation turned this into a better electrophile, the second protonation turned it into a better leaving group. So now that has left.